Hey, everybody, and welcome to 3D Hangout. Today is August 14th and is the second episode. Uh, thanks for joining us. We hang out uh, live each week here to share the latest in 3D printing news, projects from the Adafruit Workbench, designs from the community, and other resources to help you create better 3D printing projects with electronics. I'm the host, Matt Griffin, uh, the Director of Community and Support here at Adafruit. And I'm here in the Adafruit factory in the heart of New York City. Joining me each week uh, from uh, Adafruit South, Noe and Pedro. Hey, guys. How are you guys doing? Hey, Matt. Hey, everybody at home. Hey, Matt. How's it going? I'm Pedro, creative technologist here at Adafruit. Joining me is my brother, Noah. Hey, guys. I'm Noah, designer here at Adafruit. Uh, we have a pretty cool show for you guys set up today. So Matt, why don't you tell us what's on today's show? OK. So each week on 3D Hangouts, we have 3D news. That's right. Every week we scour the net and find interesting stories to share with you. Then we have the weekly video. An original project video featuring some awesome electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This week it's a Domo inspired Raspberry Pi B plus case. Base case. <laughs> nice. And uh, layer by layer. This is our segment where we break down layer by layer the uh, project and some of the processes that went behind the design. That's right. We have a bunch of tricks and techniques to help you design your very own customized case. I'm looking forward to it. And the last one is the Community Spotlight. Yes, awesome projects that we like to spotlight and highlight um, that make the 3D community awesome, made by people like you at home. That's right. This week, open source Octoprint project and community. Ooh, Octoprint. We'll also be sharing what's on our build platforms at the moment, uh, sneak peeks of future projects. And uh, throughout all of it, we'll keep on printing things. Yeah. That's Welcome right. to the show. Hi, guys. So so, uh, so what have you guys been up to? All right, hey, so take a look at, um, let me cue this up real quick. Pedro, you have some interesting projects you're working on. Yeah, so with uh, Halloween coming up, you can sort of guess that we've already started working on our costumes. I want to give a big shout out to James Bruton, who tipped us off on a very creative way to make a helmet. As you can see here, we're uh, starting off with a simple box doing some Whoa. radiuses, and then doing some revolves around. Uh, I think you can guess what this is going to be. It'll Judge be coming, no. nice. coming to a build platform near you very soon. <laughs> a, uh, a recent classic. Yeah. That's great. Um, and you know, you've been working on some projects, too. Yeah, totally. So uh, last week, uh, we've been grinding a lot of our failed prints and extruding them out with the Philobot to make uh, brand new prints. So this is a little guy that we're printing. It's uh, I call it a kuma, which is a little uh, tiki-style planter. And the really cool thing is that this guy used to be something else. Maybe it was a Raspberry Pi case. Maybe it was an enclosure. The, the, let that sink in for a minute. Like, you can turn your old prints into new stuff. And we'll have an awesome sort of video, and we'll talk all about that next week. Nice. Uh, and I, I really love the photo you guys have up. I think it's on uh, Instagram that w with, with all the sort of sorted out pieces, color by color. You guys have been collecting for a while. Over the years, yeah. prototyping kind of uh, accumulates. So it's good to hang on to those prints. So if you're a 3D printer out there, don't throw out your prints. Save them. They'll come to use sometime eventually. That's right. The last thing you want to see is another dead bird with a squirrel in his stomach. <laughs> oh, I'm sad for the whole rest of the show. <laughs> Oh. That's great. And a lot of people have been talking about doing recycling uh, for filament. Uh, not that many people have really gone through it and, and had that many successes. So I am going to be following what you guys are testing there very closely. Oh, um, so this week I've, I've been doing some more printing of the Wii the Builder project that I talked about last week. Um, and th this time I got some more interesting pieces, like this little clavicle looking thing here. Nice. Oh, I think maybe an eye? <laughs> Uh, ear? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I've been, you know, I printed uh, I think five or six pieces out so far, uh, and there are other people in this project who have smoked me who've done like, uh, I think almost twice that now. Wow. Um, so you have to, have to check out what they're doing at uh, weedthebuilders.com. Uh, um, I think that's what. Yeah, yeah we have to do it. Check it. Yeah, everybody yeah. wants to get involved. Um, and then another thing, uh, so we have a couple of 3D printers at Adafruit, and we often use them for testing things, printing out things that, that people need, uh, testing our various cases. Uh, they're going to be injection molding projects, that kind of thing. Uh, but 
you know, give it a chance for people to look at what they're looking like, how they fit with uh, the various electronics. And uh, also, people will have their own personal projects. This is one from uh, Tony Sherwood, uh, who designed this and was printing this out for his, uh, his like Tai Chi group. And um, he's a he's an Adafruit uh, web web dev team member. Um, and one of the things that was sort of fun about this one is that exactly. instead of trying to print it uh, two colors, um, he just went on and figured out a way for it to sort of fit together uh, to print it separately. Um, because he also was thinking about casting the parts, and this sort of makes that possible. So there's this technique that is um, sort of informally called uh, like stomp extrusion. Um, very, I mean, people are constantly sort of reinventing this, but it, it's just sort of like a practical way of taking two separate parts that fit together and adjusting the tolerances a little bit so that they, um, you know, they kind of really friction fit. You get them in there, you might use a mallet and, and like really like smash them in there, but they were printed at the same time, but it was a lot easier than, than using like dual extrusion uh, type approaches. Oh yeah, you definitely um, avoid any uh, color bleeding or anything like that, and everything just looks what, way cleaner. Yeah, you can get um, really nice surfaces that way because the, the surface on the bottom of your bed is always going to look nicer than the top. So that is really cool. Oh, definitely. And, uh, and then I've been playing around a lot with uh, with Octopi and Octoprint. Uh, we'll be sharing about it later in this uh, this episode, but um, been trying to get all the settings right so that. I can get both the, this Taz 3 and also my uh, got my little printer bot simple here. Uh, get those on there, and also using uh, Cura as a slicer, and it's it's really pretty easy to sort of get started with this. Uh, but then it gets th there's a lot of customization and cool stuff you can do. We'll talk about that later. Um, but um, one of the things I wanted to try immediately was to make sure that the the B plus worked. Uh, pretty much the same as the B. And it does. It's it works great. Um, I have uh, uh, a Model B and a Model B plus uh, Octopi rig up, and they both work great. All right. Yeah. 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 Very cool. <laughs> yeah. So um, I know you guys are are curious about uh, both um, Octoprint and uh, like Astroprint uh, and some of the and Print up here and all, all the various solutions. They might make things easy for you. Here, I have a, a f nice photo of Tony's piece from earlier. I forgot yeah. to share. Can you print? So. Yeah. So I wanted to share a couple of 3D news pieces and uh, get you guys in on this. And the first one is one that uh, you you shared earlier today. Um, the etching copper circuit boards. Yes, I love this project. Yeah, this is a really cool project. So it's up on the blog right, uh, right now. Yeah, it's from, from early this morning, 3 AM. And uh, so one of the things people have been curious about is uh, can they use 3D printing to help with various like etching projects? And the thing is, most of the materials we use don't stick. Uh, NinjaFlex does. And this, this uh, Mikey777 on Instructable shared a really handy, pretty thorough Instructable for how to how to do that. So you print in NinjaFlex, it sticks down on the copper, um, and then you can etch away and uh, preserve that part. And so there is a completed project that was working. Um, and one of the uh, nice things about this, so we we sell NinjaFlex here, and uh, and things uh, like this Pyrolex, right? Um, you can try other materials. So they were they're experimenting with. Uh, conducted fabrics and that kind of thing too, so there's there's kind of a lot of uh, possibilities there that might have not like immediately occurred to us. Um, yeah, so where did you guys first see that? Uh, I think we saw it on 3D Print, uh, like particularly like the publication, yeah, 3Dprint.com. Um, but what I really like about this project is it used 123D to make the sort of uh, the etching. And the Instructable is really detailed. It goes through like all those steps that you need to do that in your own. Um, he shares uh, printing settings, all the things that you would need to really get uh, your own sort of custom PCB etched out. It's really cool. That's great. I, I've seen people experiment with this stuff before, uh, but never successfully. This, this seems like a solid workflow. Yeah, we've seen the where you try to like make a channel or something, and then you like fill it with conductive ink. It's a little messy, and it doesn't really 
work that well with like a with a lot of voltage. So this is a great alternative. So another project. Uh, let's see here. Oh, this was something also shared this morning that you guys stumbled on, and a bunch of people had sent this in as a blog tip. Every year at SIGGRAPH, uh, really interesting projects are launched that really kind of push the, the boundaries of what people can do with uh, 3D printing and desktop 3D printing. So and real quick, project, for people that don't know what SIGGRAPH is, it's mostly like a visual effects sort of expo, um, expo where you uh, write like all of the so any algorithms that a lot of these visual effects artists use to like create, you know, like particle effects and things like this. And I really like Very they're cool. starting to do a lot of like three D printing things now. Yes. Yeah, they they added a, a wing to to include that. And one of the things that's nice is that a lot of the um, people who have the mathematical ability to really manipulate the geometries more aggressively can kind of play in in waters that they might not have looked at before. So we, we benefit a lot. And the Disney research team e each year has been launching some pretty mind-blowing stuff. And this year is no exception. This project's really cool. So they found a way to sort of optimize uh, a print uh, for densities so that it can uh, spin. And in fact, um, you know, kind of like as if this had been designed and weighted carefully as a wood model um, for a top. Uh, so check it out because the the video that's on the page there um, is is pretty pretty interesting. Yeah, the way that they're essentially doing is offsetting the um, balancing it by having uh, more infill on the inside and sort of balancing of where it'll spin and stay in you know in the center like axes of it. Yeah, yeah. The, making an elephant break dance is always a good project to share. <laughs> uh, speaking of movement. Um, okay, so there was a ZBrush event, their first uh, ZBrush Summit. Gets together all the people from the ZBrush community. They'd never done it before. It was really cool, and I believe you can still see all the stuff online now um, uh, linked over, you know, through uh, the ZBrush page. And one of the talks I thought was really cool was this one from Elastic. So they, they're a creative agency that does all sorts of design uh, from... Um, various titles to ads, and they talked about some really great stuff. They were part of the team working on the Game of Thrones intros, which I, I think are fantastic. And they were talking about a couple of the elements there, and they gave a really detailed uh, explanation for how they approached uh, these models, both scanning and processing them, uh, for this World Cup spot for Adidas. It's really interesting. It's It wasn't as... 3D printing focus, though they kept saying every once in a while, oh yeah, and then we tried to 3D print out this part, uh, just to see. Um, it's much more in the computer graphics realm, but what they were sharing about workarounds and, and ways to sort of use tools against each other was, was really great. So I recommend people check it out. Yes, there's always a plethora of different workflows and uh, sort of like organic modeling, which is what this is. A lot of sculpting. Um, it's a really good way to get very um, fast subdivisions and things like that. Um, it's an excellent uh, resource to check out. Yeah. Uh, one last little project. Uh, we shared it last week, and it happened. Um, sort of had a little bit of attention the last couple of weeks. Uh, this is a 3D printed DC brushless motor project. Wow. It's really interesting. So we don't have a super great picture of it. But this is not just a case for motor. Uh, th this uh, instructable goes through and, and shares how they got the magnets and that sort of thing in there to have it really behave like a motor. So it's kind of a tech demo. It's probably not the world's best DC motor. But seeing this kind of thing, seeing that it's possible on a desktop 3D printer like this, with uh, a little bit of sweat and kind of thinking about it. Uh, it's very exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, robotics projects where like every element of the actuators, the you know electronics might someday be like 3D printed in place. We'll see some pretty interesting uh, behaviors. So those are some, some of the neat things this week. There's a lot more in the blog, so definitely check it out. Yeah, what's the URL for all the folks at home to check out? adafruit.com slash blog. Easy, awesome. 
So you guys wanted to share your project from this week. Are you ready to share as a pie case? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to share. Do you want to switch over to us? We got you. OK, if you switch over. Um, so yeah, so this week we want to show you how to design and 3D print an enclosure for the Raspberry Pi B+. The B+, has a couple um, different things about it that make it a little bit better than the previous model. Um, in, this, um, in this case, we're, we're going to um, sort of optimize a part um, before we design the whole enclosure. It's really good to optimize a part uh, for the sake of sort of uh, time and just really need to focus on just getting the holes in the right ports, uh, the tolerances for the right ports. Um, so here, um, we are testing all the ports. And once we have all the uh, tolerances figured out, we start designing our enclosure. And uh, something a little bit different, why not add a face onto it? You know, make it a little bit personal or you know, particular to your project. Um, and in this project, we're using uh, these really tall standoffs so that the, the two enclosure pieces can be um, secured together with uh, machine screws. So that's what it looks like. It's a little bit different than what you would expect a, a, an enclosure to be. But that's what's cool about 3D printing is you can really make it to be anything. So um, let's just go right into the layer by layer. And so this project was put together, and all of our projects are mostly put together, in Autodesk 123D. It's a free um, software from Autodesk. It's a web app and a desktop app for uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, um, all those great uh, operating systems. Yeah, um, what we really like about this is that you can sort of hit uh, launch all of our projects right inside your web browser as you're looking at them and do any changes, save it out, and start printing your very own customizable projects. Yeah, if you like solid modeling, it's just a really cool uh, app that's easy, that makes it sort of easy. So um, before um, before I started modeling sort of the enclosure, you really got to model the components if you don't have them at your disposal. And um, the, the, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, um, they, they, they shared their mechanical drawing, which is great and awesome. You can get the mounting holes that way. But um, most mechanical drawings don't show the measurements of the particular uh, components. So you always got to use a, a caliper to measure your components. So um, the next thing you want to do is once you have like your, your main uh, PCB model, then you have the, modeling, uh, the, the mounting holes. Uh, you want to use these standoffs um, to, to elevate your board from the surface of the, of the enclosure. So I'm using three millimeter tall um, little standoffs, and they're just cylinders that uh, go on the outside of the hole there. Um, next thing I did is to sort of model the components. So I just used you know, very basic little squares to make the USB port, the HDMI port, um, the little audio jack, and the Ethernet port. So, and of course, the micro SD card, which is down there underneath the board. And you really want to model these things because you can um, you can use these as sort of uh, little cutouts for making the enclosure. So, and one of the other goals here is to make sure that you have enough clearance for the top of uh, oh yeah your totally. Solids. But since we're you know this is our first prototype, uh, it's it makes sense to just sort of make an optimized part that you're just testing particular things. So in this case, I'm just testing um, the mounting holes and the cutouts for uh, the various little ports there. So you can see it's just a little box and it has like a bottom. And then this is what the top looks like. Um, the top view, you notice that there's like a little bit of gap in between the wall of the, uh, of the little optimized part and the PCB. You want to have that little bit of sort of airy breathing room because it'll suffocate. Um, and then um, once you have all your, once you've measured all your components and they're laid out, you can kind of duplicate them and use those um, as a sort of object that'll cut out, that'll subtract from the, um, from the, the little enclosure that you have. Quick tip here, make a copy of this whole thing before you start doing all your booyans, because yeah, saving everything is off. You yeah. got to remake the whole thing. Yeah, it's definitely save uh, sort of uh, versions as you go along as you're testing your ports. Um, this is what it looks like when you sort of subtract all those uh, little openings. You so have an opening for the micro SD card, opening for the uh, power, uh, HDMI, little audio stuff. And this is what it looks like on the other side. Um, I actually made a design decision. Uh, if you look at the USB ports and the Ethernet, you notice that there isn't any uh, material in between there. Every time I prototyped it, it, those little pieces would snap off. So I made a design decision to just, just 
cut it out. <laughs> just kind of make it flush. Um, and then um, once you've tested it and it prints and it works all well, um, you want to save that piece out separately as a sort of widget so that you can reuse it in whatever project you want. So in this project, we're sharing just this part so you can just drop it into your project and start modeling uh, to, to whatever project you have. Um, and when I started making the final uh, box enclosure, I started with the box. So it's a, it's a box just to sort of see if everything's going to fit, right? So uh, after that, I added some fillets, which are rounded corners in solid modeling speak. And then a way to, uh, to sort of make this into two pieces is I used the polyline to draw a sketch in the middle of the, the box. So that way, I can use the split solid feature and split it into two pieces. Whoa. So that's what it looks like when you split it into two pieces. And then from there, you can apply my favorite feature that 123 has, the shell feature, which is a one-click way to make a shell out of any object. That is awesome. Uh, in this case, I'm making it two millimeters thick, because why not? I want it to be a little bit thick and a little bit thin. Uh, so I did that to the most parts. And you can see through the parts. And then um, what I like to do with most of my enclosures is make them sort of snap fit together. And to do that is the way to do that is to, um, to make these little lips that will sort of interconnect to each other. So using like two slabs of uh, solids, you can make uh, these two little frames that, um, that you, if you position them right in the right spot, like right in the edges, you can kind of see that they're um, highlighted there. You can um, sort of do an inset where it, um, where it cuts out. Look at the bottom, right? That's what I'm, I wish you could see what I'm pointing at. But at the bottom, you can see that the inside of the, um, of the, of the wall has this little, this little bit of lip that's kind of subtracted out. And then on the top part, you can see that the outside is subtracted out. So if you snap those two together, you get this really nice snap fit. And real quick, the sizing between those two lips are, it's like 0 0.4, 0 0.2 difference? Oh, no way. It's just one millimeter thick, and they're about two millimeters tall. Remember how I made it two millimeters thick? Mm -hmm. So that, that way I can have at least a millimeter of room uh, to, to make this little snap fit lip. Okay. That's what I'm calling it. And then the, the, uh, the thing that will make both of these pieces snap together is to use uh, tall enough standoffs that will um, sort of uh, cut through um, PTV. Not really cut through it, but you can probably see it more here that you can see like the cylinder has enough height that it can connect to the... Uh, so it braces uh, against the PCB. Yes. Nice. Yeah. I, do, will you take this model and continue to sort of uh, to hack on it and uh, add things like like the, like the camera, um, you know, mounting bay and, and that kind of thing? Yeah, Did totally. You... Yeah, this was just to get the tolerances right, and um, it's it's a great sort of way to to release a widget and and share it with everybody so they can get their projects quicker. And then this is what the side profile looks. So you can see like the um, the cylinder that's highlighted. That's what I'm going to use as the as the let's call it the cutter, right? It's going to cut the hole so that a machine screw can um, can screw through the bottom, uh, through the PCB, and into the the, the standoffs on the second part, making a nice little Raspberry Pi sandwich. Um, and then when you have that done, you can model what to whatever uh, you want your project to be. In this case, I made a little domo domo cone type looking face because I figured the enclosure would be hungry since it's a, it's a Raspberry Pi, right? Um, so definitely check out um, our guide on the Adafruit Learning System for um, uh, slicing settings, printer settings, and, and more details on how to sort of design your own and customize it. That's right. All the vector paths are up there as well, so you can change the face, update any um, additional mounting brackets you might need. I saw a really cool one that was just update uploaded on Thingiverse. It's a little... Um, Raspberry Pi cam that goes right on top and swivels around. I think a lot of people might have saw that one. So that'd be an awesome mo uh, mod to add to it. Yeah, and also check out the um, the video on YouTube. It should be live now, so you can see that video and, and watch it. So here's the there's a, there's one one piece of the case, right? And if everybody's wondering how the uh, the teeth are there, it's actually just two pieces that snap in. So there's his teeth. Oh no, I removed his teeth. Um, we put back. What's your uh, rule of thumb when you're trying to, to pick the um, you know the depth and the width for the um, for the hardware that you're you're screwing in there? Because the cases are yeah. really staying together really well. Yeah, totally. Um, I try a but We've tried doing it a lot, like at 0 0.9, 0 0.8. Oh. It was just so thin. Um, Not even a millimeter is enough. You you definitely want at least two millimeters of thickness for for these little standoffs. 
because you don't want them to break. And then, um, and then other considerations is also um, printing, too. Sometimes the printer will just leave two walls and nothing in the middle, even though uh -oh. you specified 30% infill. It's just not going to fill it in. So um, increasing it that way, it'll make sure that the whole wall is actually filled in. Yeah, no totally. Gaps. What, what, uh, what layer height did you pick for that one? Uh, this is just point 0.2. It's nice. a nice, uh, not too high res, not too low res. I yeah. wanted to be printed pretty fast, so. Yeah, so it's PLA. We're printing at, like, 90 um, feed rate, 120 travel rate, and uh, pretty good settings for getting this guy out. Yeah, it'll fit on a printer bot, uh, simple or metal, because it's nice and small, and you nice. can print a whole family of these on a TAS bot. <laughs> Well, speaking of uh, PrinterBot and the TAS, I've been spending a lot of time this past week looking at um, OctoPrint, like I was talking about earlier, and, uh, and, and Cura for slicing. And, um, and having a lot of luck, I've been sort of driving my printers around and, and have been able to print some things. But I wanted to give a special sort of shout out to uh, both the, you know, the, the OctoPrint community in general and also the uh, uh, creator, uh, Gina. Um, Halsga. I my German is not super great, but um, I, I, that is my closest approximation. Uh, so uh, Gina had started this project um, back, I think, in 2011, uh, just as a you know, needing something like this, not finding it, making it over the course of a like a, a just a December break, I believe, and. Uh, now there are so many users across the world using this. And what it is is a, a, a host software for your 3D printers. And what's even sort of cooler than just being a way to connect your printers, it's something that is optimized so you can get this on a um, embedded solution like a Raspberry Pi. There's, uh, there's the uh, creator who had started it, uh, Gina. Um, and you can do a lot of things that might not have immediately sort of occurred to you once you have a way to, to connect your uh, 3D printer to like a Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone, PC Duino, any of these type of uh, embedded solutions. Uh, so you not only can sort of manage like the printing, the basic printing, which is pretty, pretty great. Um, I'll show you. Uh, this is one of the the screens that you would see. Um, I'm, would, I was viewing this uh, OctoPrint rig from a browser of another computer. So you can see the temperature. You can uh, click on control, and you can adjust the homing and, and move around. And you can select prints to run. Uh, but you can do a lot more. They have more and more of these features being added by the community and by, uh, by Gina, who's still the, the main person sort of developing this, including uh, this G-code viewer, which is really great. You can even be very far away and monitoring uh, a print and see exactly where it is. And also, you can have a, a camera attached to your Pi and uh, be getting uh, photos and, in fact, setting up time lapses uh, to automatically be captured at a certain interval while you're printing so that you can go back and, and sort of look at uh, what's happened. So I'm going to go back real quick, because the uh, OctoPi project is really a great place to go uh, to start. It's the, the easiest way to sort of install. Um, so I'll be sharing about a bunch of tips and tricks that I've found for, for getting all of the um, printers that we sell on an OctoPrint uh, rig so you guys can try it from, from home. Um, that's, there's, uh, this is going up in the blog a little bit later today uh, to tide you over. Uh, this Tom's guide, um, a really good tutorial of just, you know, race you through the first steps of setting up uh, Octopi. Um, so you guys should check it out. And um, it's, uh, it's a really impressive project, community project, that is benefiting people all over and uh, allowing printers to, to, to separate their, their laptops from their machine and do even more with the printers and share back data. It's going to uh, really change the landscape, desktop 3D printing. Yeah, I can't wait to set up ours right now. Right now, it's just running off of spare Mac minis and laptops that we have lying around. But yeah, it's so 
less resource intensive. Oh, yeah, this is a great project that I think every printer operator might want to check out. Totally. Nice. So that's the show from this week. Uh, we'll be sharing uh, more about these things in the future. Uh, 3D Thursday isn't over. Uh, check out all the stuff that we're sharing on the blog today. And also, also check out this week's project on YouTube. And be sure to check out our guide on the Adafruit Learning System for all the print settings and details on how to design and 3D print your own enclosure for the Raspberry Pi Plus. That's right. In addition to our hourly coverage on 3D Thursday posts, uh, don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel. Um, follow us on Twitter, G+. Uh, follow us on Instagram for all the sneak peeks of future projects. Yeah. Great. So that's the show for today. And uh, we'll see you all next week. And uh, until then, we'll uh, keep on printing. Thank you all. Oh, we leave you with a moment of printing.